Cruising solo is a painful experience. It hits the bank balance hard. It's impossible to cruise solo without paying the same price as a couple. Or is it? I cruise up to 10 times a year. Nine out of those 10 are normally solo because my partner works full time, doesn't have the opportunity to come on all those cruises. I want to stop, like most people, having to pay the same as two people to cruise. Then I could actually get twice as many cruises for my budget. Now, as I headed back into cruising after shutdown, I was booking cruises for the startup. I was planning into next year. I'd booked almost 15 cruises actually over a period of time. And I realized that except for one, I was paying the price of two for just me. So for example, my partner was coming on Cunard Queen Elizabeth and the cruise was exactly the same price for both of us going versus me going by myself. So this is kind of crazy. It made me stop and think. My heart was making my decisions, the excitement of cruising, instead of my head, which was looking for value for money. And I got a little bit embarrassed because I was actually ignoring and have been ignoring in my excitement to go cruising all the past advice that I've been giving to solo cruise passengers. So I stepped back and went through the whole process again to work out how to not pay so much when cruising solo. And this is what I found out. The first option is of course to take someone. So if my partner can't go, ask a friend, so share the cost. So my friends are not that interested in cruising, so I could go and look for other sharing options. Now there are options to share with people which companies and organizations will arrange for you. And I wanted to focus on ones that, if I did that, made me feel safe and comfortable. So I looked at some options like an app called Cabinmate. It's a bit like a dating app but it felt a bit random. You could do video chats, but I felt it wasn't for me because I wanted to have more security around who I would be sharing with. So the most promising option that I was aware of and looked at again was Vacations to Go. They have single cruises. They run them around six to eight times a year. They go to great places like the Caribbean, Alaska, the Mediterranean, and they go on lines like Princess, Norwegian, and Celebrity. So definitely something to appeal to me. As I explored them, I discovered they'd run them for over 15 years, so lots of experience. Importantly, they're hosted and they have some activities and excursions if you want to go on them for those of you on the trip. So this, that added layer of kind of security. They mostly use double occupancy rooms and they match you with someone of the same gender so you avoid the supplement. But what really appealed to me is if they cannot find someone suitable, they cover the surcharge. So you can go look online, you can sign up for the newsletter. So that sense of a hosted trip and the guarantee that if they don't find someone suitable, you still will pay the lower fare was very appealing. There's also another site which appealed, which is called Singles Travel International. They offer a mix of hosted trips and unhosted cruises. But what I liked about them is, unlike vacations to go, they go to much more exotic locations as well, more unusual cruise lines like sail ships, but they also offer that cabin match on the more costly options if they need to. So they can match you up with someone and again, they will cover the surcharge. So if you do want to share with someone other than a friend, there is definitely an option. But the more I looked at it, I decided it definitely wasn't for me. I don't want to share with a stranger because I can't even share with friends. I never go on vacation with friends because I don't like sharing with a room with them or a cabin with them. But I did say that, that hosted option did feel a little bit more safe. So my next option that I went to look at was solo cabins on cruise lines. The great news as I looked at this is even more cruise lines have started to address solo travel than when I last looked at it. And they're adding solo cabins to their new ships. Now there are a couple of problems I came across, but I want to talk about some of the positives before I get into some of the problems. Although I did find it quite hard to find in one place where all the solo cabins were listed by cruise line and by ship. So I actually created a list which is on my website and you can take a look at that and I'll keep updating it as more ships and lines add solo cabins. There are sites like Cruise Critic which also have lists but I found that they weren't up to date so hopefully my list will help. Now as I developed that list and added to it, a couple of things really came clear to me about solo cabins if I was to go down that route. There are really only two lines that cater in a very focused way for solo travelers. That's Norwegian Cruise Lines. They have their solo studios. They have them on five of their 15 ships at least at the time of recordings like Escape, Bliss, Getaway, Pride of America and so on. These are solo studios. It's a dedicated area. They have solo cabins, they have a lounge, they have a secure keycard access, 
but they're all inside cabins, but very, very focused. Then the Saga cruisers, 20% of their cabins are solo cabins. What's great about them is their balcony upwards. They even have solo suites. However, if you want to go on Carnival, the biggest cruise line in the world, or Princess, which is the fifth most popular cruise line in the world, they don't, certainly at the time of recording, have solo cabins. So they're out of the way to start with. Now, of the other lines, there are some options. Royal Caribbean, they've got 10 ships that now have solo cabins. Again, they're mostly inside, so that may not be something that appeals to you. MSC Cruises on certain new ships like Seaside, Seaview, Meraviglia, and even Bellissima and so on, they also have a number of solo cabins. Again, mostly inside. Holland America, a really popular line, they on their new ships do have some solo cabins, but again, it's pretty limited. So for example, they only have 12 cabins on ships like the Koningsdam and the new Statendam. So again, pretty limited. Now, as I dialed into it a bit further, I found a couple of other things is first of all, prices are still pretty steep. So even those Norwegian solo studios, they're still about a 30% premium if you're traveling an inside cabin with somebody else. So it still is a premium, but of course it's cheaper than paying for two people. Also, unless you book way, way, way in advance, pretty much when cruises come on sale, you basically won't get them. Now you could find easier on Norwegian and Saga because they have so many more. The other thing I discovered with pricing is that you need to watch it very carefully because in a number of cases, I found that actually going in a different cabin and paying for two people was actually gonna be cheaper than the solo cabin option. And that's because there were promotions on those high grade cabins but not promotions on the solo cabin. So very important, watch and make sure that it's actually still the cheapest option. But very importantly, because not all the ships and all the lines have solo travelers, it does mean that us as solo travelers are actually limited to the itineraries that we can go on because they're limited to those itineraries that those ships are doing rather than perhaps itineraries that we really want to do. And also because they tend to be on bigger ships, the choice of itineraries is much more limited. So it's pretty good if you do want to go cruising to say the Caribbean on the standard sort of cruise, the Mediterranean on the standard cruises, or possibly Alaska, in other words, the three biggest cruise regions, you're probably going to find a solo cabin if you plan well in advance. But what if you want to do something a little bit different? So definitely finding a solo cabin with a bit of good planning on a good classic route in Alaska, the Mediterranean or the Caribbean was going to be an option. But I want to go on some of the more bucket list, unusual, exotic cruises for my plans ahead. I want to go to the Baltics, Iceland, Norway, through the Panama Canal to French Polynesia, or perhaps some more unusual Caribbean and Mediterranean itineraries. So what can I do then? What are my options then? Well, what a solution I found was quite a simple one. Sign up for email newsletters for all the lines that I like and basically wait for deals to come through. Because they do, a lot of cruise lines will do reduced surcharge, single travel, solo travel deals. I found through that process, for example, a great river cruise on Amber Waterways for next year, but it's a much more erratic way of doing it because you're really relying on promotions. What I did find though, is there are agents and sites that will collate all the offers that are available for solo travelers. And that is gonna open so many more options for me and for you. And I've actually used these to guide my plans ahead because they let me know what are happening, and they have visibility of all the lines, some of which I may not have considered, even some of the itineraries I may not have considered. The most useful of those sites I've found were, again, vacations to go. So they also have a unhosted solo cruise page where they list all the various deals that are going. So they're good for people like me that don't want to go on a shared or a hosted cruise. They have a great list there, and at the time that I looked, they had about 40 or 50 cruises, which range from 0% to 25% supplement. So that's a really good one to look at. Another good one, which I was actually recommended, is called Passion for Cruises, and that's a UK-based site. They, again, list loads and loads of solo deals. There are a couple of others which are not cruise-specific, like Solo Holidays UK, and of course, don't forget that Singles Travel International site that I referred to earlier, because they also list non-hosted cruises. So how did all this work out for me? Well, I faced probably the ultimate test of solo cruising is Antarctica. I went to Antarctica on Silver Sea in 2019, but I wanted to go again. I didn't just want to do the Antarctica Peninsula, but I also want to see South Georgia, the Falklands, to see those huge penguin colonies. 
There's a couple of great cruises I saw on different cruise lines, including Silver Sea, Ponant. They last about three weeks, but the cabin would cost around £30,000, about $40,000 if two people were going, but also if one person was going. They don't have solo cabins. Sharing wasn't an option. My partner didn't want to do it. My friends didn't want to go cruising and couldn't afford it. So it pretty much looked impossible. And this is one I absolutely had to solve. There was no way I could possibly pay that amount of money to go by myself. So I'd signed up for lots of emails. I spoke to my agent and the good news was through focusing on those sites which listed all the cruises, focusing on the email newsletters, I eventually did get an email which listed a low solo surcharge on a Penant cruise. That three week cruise spoke to my travel agent and booked it and I got that for a very low 15% surcharge. So the process worked for me. There were no solo cabins. There's no way that I could share, certainly not for three weeks. And that last process worked, which also got me thinking because the way that I found my original Silver Sea cruise was also through email newsletters when Silver Sea were doing a last minute deal on Antarctica where they were offering, I guess, what were empty cabins for solo travelers, again, at a 20% only surcharge. So that's another good example about how signing up for those email newsletters watching those sites and making sure your travel agent knows that you're looking for those deals can work. So the great news is I found a way of doing those cruises for at least less than I am paying now. Of course, there are unfortunately still some that I'm paying for full surcharge because it's an itinerary I really want to do and none of these things worked. So have I found the ultimate solution to the problem of paying twice for every single cruise? I haven't found that solution yet, but I think through these various steps, I have at least found the way that half or more of my cruises will be for much less. And importantly, those really big costly ones. So when I'm going to the Caribbean, the Mediterranean or Alaska, I can find a way of doing it really, really inexpensively. How can I actually help you? Well, hopefully by sharing this approach, it's given you a sense of how to tackle it. And that resource hopefully will be one way to help you cruise for the price of one, not for the price of two. If you want more tips, for example, what are the best cruise lines to think of as a solo traveler or as an adult traveler, take a look at this playlist. And I'm gonna start in there with the very best of the cruise lines to focus on as a solo traveler. See you over there.